Hey everybody, uh, back again. Uh, done and kind of show you a little bit about uh, GPOs or group policies. Um, right now I'm back on the server with AD installed. Um, has AD installed DHCP and DNS. Uh, what we're going to do is go up to tools in the server manager. And then we're going to find group policy management. From there you're going to open up your group policy. In this case I automatically started in my forest and down in my domain. But normally you'd start all the way up here. And you just select the force that you have. Uh, you can have multiple forces, but in this case, I only have one, so I'm choosing this one. Then I'm going to go down to my domains. Then I select my domain, so now I'm uh, modifying any group policies or building or deleting group policies underneath that domain. So, go down one more. Now, you have a set of uh, a couple of things here. You have the default domain policy, domain controllers, and all these have a different policy broken down for them. Uh, I'm just kind of expanding here, kind of just show you all that. Uh, you like you have your uh, domain controls have default domain control policy. That means all the servers in the domain that are part of the domain controller or act as a domain controller in some way or some form, you can set policies for. Uh, there's also the group policy where you can set policies for specific groups. Now, right now, we're going to go to the default domain policy, which is at the very top of our domain here. It's not in any subfolder. And then tell me I'm selecting one of my group policies that is referenced down. Now, this one right here that I just clicked is actually underneath group policy objects, which is default domain policy. And as you notice in uh, domain controllers, you have another policy right there that says default domain control policy. That's actually linked into group policy objects too. Uh, you can tell by the little arrow in the bottom left corner of the icon for... Uh, the group policies is how you know it's referencing. But I just selected it. Uh, I could select it down here and I'll get the same information. Uh, it doesn't matter. I just went to the top one just to quickly go there for you. And you can always disable this message as you can see popping up saying, hey, you're referencing your link to, and you don't have to worry about that. What I want to go over is kind of what does a policy do and what can it, uh, how do you change the settings? So for right now, uh, this is the default policy. Uh, up at the top it says display. So this location is right now set to gmscripts.local. So that's set to the default domain. And then down here, following domains and always linked to the CPU. So it's telling you what it is. Now you have these other options that say enforced and link enabled. Link enabled means make sure it has a reference to it. Now there's also enforced here, which is just link enabled. If I do for enforced, that means that policy has to be forced down to everything in the domain. So it is required. To get anything to work, it is required to have that G GPO or group policy running. Now, down here we have our security settings. The security settings GPO, uh, it's kind of what it applies to. Where is it going? Right now, this is set to authenticated users. So, what that means, it goes to every user that has ever signed in. Now, you can make specific group policies that go for only computers or a certain group of computers or, certain, yeah. You can break it down even farther. And I'll kind of show you that here. I'm going to click add. Now I have my default domain, but I want to show you everything in my domain. So I'm going to click advanced, and it's going to pop up a big one. At the very top, it'll say user group and built-in security principles, and then it'll say from this location, it should say the domain. So in my case, gmscripts.local. Now I'm not sending anything into search, so I'm going to click find now. Now this brings up a whole listing. This is everything I could ever find in uh, users and computers under my active directory. Now, as you can see, there's tons of little things here. Some you probably never heard of or you don't use. Uh, you can tell by the icons next to them if it looks like it has two people there. That means it's a group. If it has one person, that means it's a user. Uh, some of these are disabled, so they have a little arrow next to them, a red arrow. But I'm just going to kind of go down here, and you can just see all the different things that are on this Active Directory or on the server in general. So I'm just scrolling through here. You see all this. Now, I made groups before in a previous tutorial. One was called Test-Trial. So I'm going to actually select that. I can click add, boom. Now it'll apply to test out trial. So that means that uh, that group will also get this policy, which isn't needed because I have authenticated users anyways. So it's just kind of wanting to show you that. And you can always change it by clicking properties on that group. And then you can you can modify that group. You can see what members are in it. Uh, does anybody manage that group or anything of the sort? But I'm just going to remove it now. Doot doot. Now, another thing about group policies is you can get details. So you can see if it's enabled. You can see when it was created, the last time it was modified. Um, then there's the settings. Settings doesn't do anything for you. 
just a heads up, it doesn't. Uh, what it's there for under the uh, uh, under the default domain policy or any domain policy or group policy in general is there to show you what you have set up. It tells you what policies have changed, what settings are set. As you can see right here, it tells me what I have enforced, what is minimum age, when does it require, how many characters, does it have the complexity, do I want to store previous passwords. That, that's what this one's showing right now. And to be honest, what you want to do is probably the minimum length you probably want is now 12. Uh, you want it to remember the passwords. Uh, you don't want them in a reversible encryption unless you're really wanting to do that, but I want to uh, do that. And uh, you can set other policies, uh, lockout times. Right now it has zero invalid login attempts. Uh, Force user login restrictions. And I'll go into more detail on that. I just kind of wanted to show you this, uh, just kind of help you understand what it is. And then delegations. Uh, delegation is who can edit, who can read, or custom. As you can see, the settings are here, a lot of permission. Then K users are allowed to read it. They can see what the group policy is. It's kind of required to do that. Uh, you have your domain. They have custom. So actually, in this case, uh, you, have full, you have full rights to it. You can edit, delete, and everything. And then the system can do its own changes. Uh, when would the system do this? Say if uh, there's a security patch that came out on Windows. And one of the major issues is not having something in the policy or something in the policy was set wrong, it'll change it for you. Uh, you don't see those a lot, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, I've gone over everything about the group policy, just the basic settings. I haven't shown you how to configure or change it. So what you can do is right click on the default policy in the left, uh, the left hand column over there and then click edit. So it should be the very first one at the top. And it'll open up the group policy manage uh, meant editor. I'm going to kind of expand this a little bit bigger here. Doop. All right, so you run into two seconds, computer configuration, user configuration. Now, computer configuration means when that user logs in, what can they do on the computer? What access can you set? So I'm going to kind of break that down here real quick. We're going to go to Windows settings. So I went to com computer configuration, policies, Windows settings. Now, there's a little things here. There's a script startup and shutdown. Say if you need to run a security script, uh, this is, would be the best place to go, as you can see right here. I went all the way down, I clicked Security, Scripts, and then I clicked Startup. Uh, upon Startup, I can go over here, Add, and it'll allow me to add in a script. Please be aware, these scripts need to either be located on the machine, and you have to reference them on the machine, or on a local shared folder somewhere that's open to the public that you can actually download these. Uh, and you have two different tabs here in the newer uh, Windows is the PowerShell scripts, which is a new way of they're trying to go, trying to deprecate CMD. Uh, and then you have your basic scripts, and that will be your bat files and stuff. Uh, you can do the same thing for shutdown. They just give you the same options. Uh, you have security settings. Uh, this one's a little bit farther down. And this one has a lot. It has account policy, local policies, restriction groups, file system. Uh, and I can go into big detail on each single one of these, but I just kind of want to show you how to break it down. So... Uh, we saw the group policy of where it was showing uh, requirements for the password. So we're going to go to account policy at the top and then password policy. Now password policy, this is what I was talking about. Enforce password history for 24 passwords. That's a lot of passwords, but it's a great way to stay secure. Uh, maximum password age. Uh, this is saying how long that password can be there until they're forced to change it. Uh, min minimum password length. Okay, right now it's set to 7. Let's set it to 12. That is required now in this system. You have to have 12 characters in your password. And meets complexity requirements, yes. And you can go and break this down. Complexity requirements are the basics of you need an uppercase, lowercase, a number sign, a special sign, and all that. And that can actually be changed too, but I'm not done going into detail on that. I just kind of wanted to show you those. Uh, and then we have our account lockout. What does account lockout do? That means that person tries signing into that, say the account was Garrett. Tried signing into that account about 20 times. Well, they're still going. Why are they still going? They shouldn't be. So you can set a lockout threshold. How many login attempts can they have? Doot, 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 doot. Where do I go? Seven. And it's going to say duration. Now, you can set the duration for unlimited, as you can see right here. Right now, it's set to suggest the setting is 30. I haven't set any of those yet, so we'll go to that in a second. Doot, doot. And then there's a lockout, uh, reset account, lockout counter after how long? Now, these are automatically set as uh, 30 minutes. You can set it for longer every time they fail. Um, lockout duration, doo -doo, you can change that. And lockout count, counter after so many minutes. So what you can do is say they got locked out for 30 minutes. Now you want to make sure 
They can try logging back in after 30 minutes. Okay. So they got 30 minutes to wait. They waited 30 minutes and everything. And it keeps on changing my settings here. What you do is you set your logout duration for 30. Okay, they're locked out. Now they can try logging in one more time and then they have to wait another 10 minutes until it resets. Or you set them to the same. Usually you set the policy the same though in this case. Um, then you have the Kerberos policy and this is kind of another nice setting. User tickets, a tolerance. I'm not going to go into any of that information. Um, let's see here. Anything cool? Uh, you have audit policy, user write assignments. We're not, don't worry about that. Security options. Here we go. So I just went into local policies under security settings and then went into security options. Now, administrative account policy, you can set defined, disabled. Uh, you might have a specific group that uh, they can't be administrators on computers no matter what. That would be where you set it. Uh, you disable administrators because nobody can change anything. Uh, you can block Microsoft accounts uh, in case you don't want uh, exploits coming in. And this is a nice feature because uh, what, uh, what, what, with the new operating systems, you can actually use a Office 365 account and use that as your login. You can block that and make sure they use an actual local AD account on that computer. Uh, guest account status, you usually want that disabled. Default is disabled anyways especially if you go on an AD. You can set up the uh, devices allowing undocking, uh, log on. You can remove uh, where they can't have removable devices, allow CD-ROMs. I'm just kind of going down the list here. You, there's so many different things in here. You can lock down the computer down to where all they have is a start button. <laughs> and they click start and they can shut it down or log off. You can make it where they only can log off. And you can change all those things. Um, that's under the computer, and let's go to the users here. I'm not done going into great details, and we can go and change their policies just for the users, but I'm done go to preference here. Uh, you have your control panel settings. So I went to users, preferences, control panel. This is another way. It's kind of the older way to add uh, local network drives, user start menu options. So like I can go here, start menu. Boom, there's nothing. I can go new, add start menu, at least Windows Vista. The doot. And then I can tell it, hmm, okay. Well, now I'm changing the settings for their start menu. We can go display as menu, computer. Do not display this item. Uh, connect to control panel. That's do not display this item. Uh, let's remove the connect to. Default programs. That's nope. That's do not display. Enable context menus. Nope. We're not going to allow that. Games. We don't want them to have games on their computer. Uh, help, highlight. And right now I'm just kind of unchecking these but mainly I want to show you how far you can lock down the computer to some extent on the start menu and click there uh, we don't want them to run anything we're going to remove search uh, search for this users don't search for files search programs nope sort all programs we don't want them to be able to see that and don't use large icons uh, we don't want them to that and we want it to clear number of programs in list zero click apply here real quick Okay, that's been added. Then we have our classics, uh, display, run. Uh, you don't really have to worry about that. Context menus, nope. Drag and dropping. Use personal files, menus, nope. And then there's basic kind of run in, log on user security context, apply once and do not reapply. You can change these settings where they just keep on going. And that's another way to change it. You have your folder options. Uh, all these will come up blank. Um, there's devices here. You can go here, new device. So what does that do? You can go and specify what type of devices they're allowed to have connected. In this case, I'm going through my server and say if I plugged in a USB, I plugged in a specific USB. I, and in this case, I'm going to plug in a floppy. I plugged in a floppy, it's a USB floppy, found it, and I went to select. Well, that will allow them to have that device. Or I can have them have access to a device on this server that allows them to maybe install something or reference something. And that's just a nice trick. Um, and then finally, after you did all those changes, I'm going to click exit here. So you did all those changes and everything. I'm going to go back to details. I'll tell you the last time it was updated. It was updated today. Now I need to go to the computer and see that new policy. So I'm going to go right here, click connect. Hoping I remember my login to this. I haven't actually tested this today. Um, doo -doo. Oops, I totally messed up that. And now we're just waiting for it to load here. Uh, 
In this case, I haven't activated this Windows is just for the test environment. See, no policies have been updated here. So one way you can do, uh, you can update the policy. And updating the policy just requires a running of a command. You can run it from the server, which should force it out, or you can run it from the computer that you want to see that command update. You can go gp update forward slash force. Should download the new policy from the server for you. All right, in this case, I have it off. But I just wanted to show you that command, uh, gp, u update, or gp update forward slash force. It will force an update. Uh, if you do it on the server, it should push out to all the computers. If uh, you do it on one of the computers, it will just update that computer's policy. It will upgrade the users and the com uh, computer. Uh, when your computer boots up, it instantly downloads the group policy. And, and it's a nice experience. If there's any questions on this, leave a comment down below or send me a message, and I'll be happy to help you. Hope this was informative, and have a good one. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, if you like the video, please leave a comment or uh, like below. Um, if you want to keep up with all activities on the channel, click subscribe. And if you would like to watch another video, there's some videos listed down below here. And thanks for watching.